Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that, unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is Politics Done Right. Welcome to Politics Done Right from the studios of KPFT 90.1 FM, Houston, your community radio station. We have a great program for you today. Progressives and Democrats always, always have better policies for middle class America and the poor. Always. And the reason why it's a philosophical difference as far as how one improves themselves, etc., one is based on if you're lucky, all is fine, or if others deemed you okay, qualified, it's fine for you to make, it's f- fine for you to have, uh, ascend. But most or several of centrist Democrats going on television, they are a poor excuse for making the case for a self sufficient middle class and poor person getting ahead. Better policies, but I mean the Republicans run, run rings around them in lying, in misinforming, in misconstruing. I want you to see this interview, or it's actually an interview on CNN. Both Blumenthal and Lindsey Graham are there. And Lindsey Graham is so much, is so well prepared for a Democrat who has no way of explaining himself in a manner that punches back, in a manner that everyone sees the truth. Check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. This is simply upsetting, at the same time, fascinating. Check this out. Three independent economic analyses, including the Congressional Budget Office, all say the Inflation Reduction Act will actually have little to no impact on inflation. How is this bill actually going to help Americans who are having trouble paying for their groceries, for their housing, for their gas? Great question. And thanks for having us in this bipartisan way. I think Americans are going to see the cost of their prescription drugs cut because of Medicare negotiations. They're going to see energy costs cut because they're going to be receiving credits and rebates for energy saving and cost cutting measures. And they're going to see greater tax fairness because corporations that are currently paying nothing will have to pay at least 15 percent. We're talking corporations with assets of more than a billion dollars or earnings of excess in that amount. So we're going to see costs of gasoline continue to drop, costs of necessities to decline, and I think Americans will see historic results. Well, this is not the bipartisan part of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> so the American Rescue Plan, remember that one? That was supposed to make us every, make everything better. Well, it became a recession plan. This is going to make everything worse. I voted for a bipartisan uh, infrastructure bill. I voted for gun legislation. I'm not going to vote for this. Uh, the minimum tax of 15 percent destroys expensing. Now, what does that mean? If a company buys a piece of equipment, they could expense it under the 2017 tax cut in the same year they bought it. That goes away. So CBO says it disincentivizes companies for building factories, buying equipment, which would help us get out of recession. There's a 16.4% 
uh, tax on imported barrels of oil that are going to increase cost at the gas pump. Uh, subsidies for Obamacare go to families making $304,000 a year, which I think is ill conceived. And the bottom line, it's not going to help inflation. It's going to make everything worse. One, one of the other things that the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, said, Senator Graham, is that the bill would reduce the deficit. Republicans historically have been very focused on reducing the deficit. So why not support that? It says it would reduce the deficit by $100 billion. We're going to spend almost a trillion dollars. The truth is that the um, American, uh, the Obamacare subsidies go away after three years. Well, we all know they're not going to go away. So if they stayed in place for 10 years, it would add $280 billion to the deficit. So it's a gimmick. They've got a gimmick in the bill to limit the subsidies for three years that go to people who make $304,000 a year. Uh, this thing's going to make everything worse and not one Republican is going to vote for it. Well, I'll tell you one thing where I think we can agree it will make things better is the IRS is going to have resources it needs to go after the highest income Americans that are cheating on their taxes right now. And it will mean more revenue for the government. And frankly, cutting through all of the numbers, all of the CBO stuff, the average American sitting at their kitchen table deciding whether they can buy <coughs> medicine, pay their mortgage, or go to the grocery store and get the food they need, they're going to be able to get that medicine much more cheaply. And overwhelmingly, the American people want to cut the cost of prescription drugs. This measure does it through enabling Medicare to do what the VA does, what the Department of Defense does, negotiate for lower prices. And that will affect the entire course of inflation. And I just want to bring one other issue that's in this bill. And I don't agree with here. that. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Well, Let's number talk. one, uh, prescription drugs. This is price fixing. They take 15 drugs and they put a limit on what you can charge. That sounds good until pharmaceutical companies uh, invent less new drugs. Remember COVID? Well, it was the American pharmaceutical industry that got us the drugs that keep us out of the hospital and keep a lot of us alive. This is price fixing. It's never worked for us. not going to work now. Hiring 86,000 more IRS agents, if that makes you feel better, you missed a lot. They're coming after waitresses, Uber drivers, and everybody else to collect more taxes. So uh, if, if you think growing the IRS is good for you, you're wrong. Do you want to respond or you want to move I on? I think the <laughs> IRS is going to target the highest income Americans, as uh, the saying goes. That's where the money is. Yeah. That's where they're going to look to collect. Yeah. The idea that there's going to be this army of IRS agents defending, descending on the average American is just preposterous. Tax fairness is what we need. And for the biggest corporation in this country to pay no taxes, for them to do stock buybacks, that benefit the shareholders. But for example, in the case of oil companies, they are making three to four times what they did just last year. What are they doing with those excess windfall profits, lowering gasoline prices? No, they are doing stock buybacks. They ought to pay a tax on it. Okay. And, and I think there ought to be rebates to consumers. Oh boy, that was painful. First of all, Lindsey Graham, you are good. You know how to put lipstick on a pig and you did it perfectly. I can't, I, if, if I had a pig trying to put, I would have to ask you to do it. You spoke to the waitress. You spoke to everybody and you showed them with, with misinformation how this new bill that is actually going to be good for a lot of folks it's going to be bad. You are good. And all Rosenthal could speak about were things like, uh, you know, we are going to create the IRS to run across and, 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 um, and, and find all those rich people that don't pay taxes. And the average American going to say, yeah, but those rich people have accountants that they are going to know not to do X, Y, Z. So it makes what Lindsey Graham says sound a little bit more true. Or, oh, we're going to get your drug prices cut. And look, here is the deal. If you really wanted to challenge Lindsey Graham, let's look at some of the things Lindsey Graham said. He said, he kept on saying, we are uh, how to get us out of this recession. We are not in a recession. You cannot be in a recession with 500,000 jobs created in a month. That the GDP has dropped two months in a row. Those are technical reasons why it dropped. He should have challenged Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, would you prefer us to be in the upswing that, that Trump was in when we only had 100,000 people per month? Or do you prefer what we are giving Americans, over 500,000 new jobs per month? He should have challenged him. You notice, 
uh, when, when Blumenthal started, he said, oh, thanks for having us in this bipartisan manner. And as soon as Lindsey Graham uh, has to respond, he pats him on the back and he says, this is not going to be bipartisan. It's like the child who looks like the person that can't defend you. Okay, now Lindsay talks about, oh, the, by, by allowing us to negotiate for drug prices. And by the way, it's only about 10 or 15 drugs they're negotiating. There are thousands of drugs, right? But they want you to believe that somehow they are going to be hurting the drug companies. Let's get something clear first. Drug companies do not take risk. They do not invent. Look at their balance sheet. Most of their profits don't go back reinvested into research. Their profits go to shareholders. Their profits go, or, or rather, their monies go to spend on advertising. They spend more on advertising and marketing than they do research and development. Does that tell you something? Or is that going to harm research? It makes absolutely no sense. And Blumenthal did not challenge that. Blumenthal should say, wait, Lindsay, remember, most of the drug research is done by the taxpayer dollars, and you always try to hold that back. You always try to hurt taxpayers. Remember, the private sector only takes a drug after it has been developed. Then Lindsay says, you remember COVID? COVID was, if it weren't for us, uh, having the pharmaceutical companies well-funded, we would not have solved COVID. False. We gave $2 billion to the companies to rush the output on COVID vaccines after we had paid universities and other entities the money to research RNA uh, or M mRNA technology. You see, all these things immediately, want, once Lindsay talked about COVID, we should have said COVID was done through the government, not the pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceuticals completed the research funded by the government. Thank you so kindly. Thank you very much. But no, Blumenthal didn't say that, right? Then he called, then the 15% uh, uh, rate. Oh, if you charge him 50%, that company who would have bought uh, uh, expensed a factory. What they mean is expense and mean that uh, when 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 they build that factory, they could instead of depreciating it over thirty years, they may have just expensed the entire factory. It's under certain limits, right? So that they could reduce their taxes. In other words, instead of spreading out that that depreciation, and by the way, depreciation of taxes is a tax scheme anyway. But instead of depreciating it over thirty years or something like that. To reduce their immediate taxes, they go ahead and they jam it all to say, ah, we don't really owe taxes because we're expensing out that factory altogether. So they're saying, oh, you charge them a minimum of 15%, these guys would not be able to do the trick, so they pay zero taxes. To which uh, Blumenthal should have said, wait a minute, you mean these guys depend on the tax system to invest in a factory that's going to keep them viable? The reason why manufacturing of the microchips is done in Taiwan and not the United States is because of the gimmicks of these guys wanting to take the profits and not pay taxes? Is that what you're saying, Lindsey Graham? We, we are so terrible in confronting the stupidity of the right, the non-functionality of the policies. Right. Come on, folks. Look, their policies are the reason why we have deteriorating infrastructure. Their policies are the reason why our airports are some of the worst in the industrialized world. Their policies are the reason why we are sicker than any other industrialized country in the world. Their policies are the reason why we have more we are the only country where you can actually go bankrupt because you get sick. Those are neoliberal. Those are supply side policies instituted by the other side. And we are apologetic when we attempt to do something right for humanity, our American humans. We are apologetic for that. Why do we have such a stick representing what it means to be an efficient person in, in, in supporting America and IRS agents running after you? You mean you want there to be a bunch of tax cheats? Come on, folks. We need to learn how to speak. And it's evident that centrists, it's evident that moderates, it's evident that we need good spokespeople, educated, intelligent. And by the way, all these guys are, but they don't have what it takes to really inform Americans. Americans vote for Republicans because we have 
guys like Lindsey Graham who are very effective communicators. And we have Blumenthal who has better policies. Not that he's the best. I mean, he's sort of a moderate guy. Guys like Blumenthal who has no, has no notion of how to connect with the average American citizen and say, hey, those taxes that you are paying, that they're not paying, you are paying indirectly in some form. A week have got to do it. So look, let's. bottom line is this. The Blumenthal's of the world are not going to get the job done. All these guys are not going to get the job. It is your job to actually articulate what we're talking about here to your neighbors, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your enemies, and everybody else, because it is clear there won't be a centrist or moderate Democrat who will be on TV articulating next to a Republican and let them have it for the havoc they've caused in this country. Welcome to the summer sizzle here at KPFT 90.1 FM. Houston, you know, we are in this short fun drive mode, but you know, you're still getting your program here, right here at Politics Done Right. Now, but I need to talk to you a bit. Um, we are moving into our new abode. We'll be moving into our new studios in the beginning of uh, September. And as, as you know, that means many of our costs will go up. But before we go in, into that, I want to urge you, first of all, to let others know about what we do here at KPFT. Not only the music that you don't get on air on the commercial stations, but on our shows that talk to the community, our talk shows, our news programs, our news opinion, news and fact-based opinion programs like Politics Done Right, ones that you're listening to right now. Uh, but this is the only place where you can get on adulterated truth, not biased by having to cater your words to what corporate America may want you to know and not know, we are here to just give you the truth. Politics Done Right and several other shows that we have on this station. Now, it's important for, for, for me to get across that, especially in this politically heated, polarized time, that we have a KPFT 90.1 FM Houston around. Why? You know, we, you, you, you listen to the newscast and you hear about polarization and you hear about how Trump is going to do this or the Republicans this, the Democrats that, progressives fighting against Democrats, etc., etc., etc. What does that really mean to you? That's what we're here for. First of all, let me say that the vast majority of Americans, left, right, middle, center, whatever you want to call it. I speak to a lot of people throughout the country. And I tell you, most of us, the vast majority of us, want the same thing. But you would not know that listening to your regular TV. You will not know that because we have forces that are trying their utter best. You must hate that other. And that other could be anything. That other could be somebody that looks different. That other could be somebody that has a different political party affiliation. That other could be somebody of another religion. But you break it all down. And you find out that most of us want the same thing. Most of us have that intersectionality where all the things that we want for ourselves and our family are pretty darn similar. But we have those forces that must keep you apart. And that's why in all the narrative that I do, in all the speaking that I do, I make sure these doors are open for everybody. I am. Honestly, 
a very progressive person. But I have uh, progressive relatives, conservative relatives, uh, middle of the road relatives. And guess what? I love them all. I speak to them all. I enjoy them all. And it's the same with my friends. I have progressives, liberals, conservatives, right-wingers, Trumpists. Hell, I have relatives that are Trumpists as well, and I love them all. What am I trying to say here? There are forces out there, and mostly on, let's say, the mainstream media is one of the largest promoters of this, that their goal is to ensure that we keep friction among all these different groups. And why? Because if you are fighting each other, if we are fighting each other, then we don't look at what is the core of our problem. And that's what we discuss here at Politics Done Right, the core of our problem. I don't care who you are. You are a family member of the Politics Done Right posse. Because that's what we're here for. Engagement, truth, communication. So now, I ask you for that specific reason. Keep us on the air by keeping us funded. We don't get funded from anywhere else but you. Yeah, we may get a little grant here and there, but nowhere to cover what it costs to bring you the truth, to bring you the things that we bring you. So I ask you so kindly, make a commitment. Please make a commitment to a station, to a program that is not there to divide, a program that is not there to, uh, to try to bring a narrative, a corporate narrative to control your mind, but support us. Because you know, we are needed. We are needed. We have to be a voice of reason. We have to be a voice of honesty. We have to be a voice of truth. So I ask you to make that commitment. Call 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713 526-5738. Five two six five seven three eight. Make a commitment to politics done right via or to KPFT via politics done right. And you know we have a few gimmicks. We have if you if you give to KPFT summer sizzle between August first and the thirteenth, you'll be automatically entered into a drawing for one of two copies of Waiting for Columbus. A deluxe eight CD set autographed by all members of the band Little Feet. Winners will be announced on August 16. One entry per person, but don't let that keep you from supporting multiple times, multiple shows. For info on the drawing rules, just go to kpft.org. But please support us. Give us a call, 713-526. 5738 or go to kpft.org as you give. Please remember to do it in the name of Politics Done Right to ensure that they that our leadership sees that the program is doing what it needs to do to ensure that we stay on air. By the way, we'll be coming to you multiple times a week, more so than now, live from the studio where we'll be taking calls. And like I said to many of you before, those of you who give KPFT, whether it's my books, whether it is some other offer that you find at kpft.org, anybody that gives over $120 to Politics Done Right in the name of Politics Done Right, I'll be arranging for those of you who want to, to come sit in the new studio with me. As we do the show. And I mean that from the depths of my heart. Because like I tell both of my audiences. Both my online audience and my KPFT audience. 
politics done right is yours. Politics done right is ours. We're here to do what's right. So please give us a call at 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Or easy, quick way, please go to kpft.org. Please remember to select that you are coming to uh, come in, that you're supporting politics done right with your contribution. And remember, you have several options uh, with many, many, many different offers as a, as a token of appreciation. But you can also support us by getting my book, As I See It, Class Warfare, The Only Resort to Right-Wing Doom for an offer of $120. You can also get it's worth it how to talk to your right wing relatives, friends, and neighbors for a offer of $120. As well, you can get, as I see it, how to make, or rather, how to make America utopia, take away the economy from those who rigged it for $120. You get any combination of those books, either two or three, and we have offers that are very, 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 very efficient for you, if you will. 713-526-5738 or simply go to kpft.org. Please, folks, please do remember, your contribution to KPFT is a contribution to sanity. It's a contribution to political sanity. It's a contribution to unity of us Americans. Again, 713-526-5738. We speak about why are things so hard? Why are things so difficult? Why do we have this angst in this country? There are forces working to ensure we have angst to ensure we have dissension among people. And these forces know exactly why and what they're doing because as you're enlightened, you become somebody who is engaged. As you're engaged, you ensure that we have an equitable society. And an equitable society means to many that they can no longer pilfer us all, that they can no longer take it all. That again, it is an equitable society. So there is reason for us not to complain about what they're doing to us, but to actually make a difference and be a part of the solution. And I, I, I am telling you, my commitment as a, as, a, as, as a citizen of this country, I remember several times looking in the mirror as we went through the angst since the inception of this program, before the inception of this program, I would always be looking and I'll be saying, why doesn't somebody do something about this? Oh my God, what CNN is saying? What Fox News is saying? What MSNBC is saying? Why don't they say this? Why don't they do the necessary things to keep people together? All the time, right? And then I remember one night sitting back and looking, just looking in, this, in space, looking in a mirror virtual mirror saying, wait a minute. I'm always saying, why doesn't somebody do something about this? Guess what? I'm looking at somebody. It all starts with you, with me in that case, in that situation. And that's when polit it, it used to be called poli uh, liberal politics done right. But after doing liberal politics done right for a while, I wanted to be all engaging and working with the coffee party and we wanted to say no this is for all americans everybody politics done right no labels yes i'm progressive but i love everybody i want everybody in 713-526-5738 again 713-526-5738 please be a part of the solution kpft.org. You can, you can support us at kpft.org as well. 
or at 713-526-5738. Remember, you are ensuring that we can stay on the air, but it's not, it is something that we need to do. So I ask you one last time before we continue with programming, 713-526-5738, 713-526-5738, or go to kpft.org. I promise you, you will feel that you are a part of the solution as you support solutions. I assure you that we intend to be frugal with your contributions. I promise you that as far as politics done right, I am here to serve. I am here to provide truth. I am here to listen. And I am here to learn from all of you. 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713 713- Five two six five seven three eight. Please be a part of the solution. Please uh, provide us some support in the name of Politics Done Right at KPFT. 713-526-5738 or go to kpft.org. And let's get into continued programming at Politics Done Right. Thank you for I could not quite believe it when I saw Dana Bass had a slide ready to go. Biden's successes. The mainstream media is finally saying something nice about what Democrats and progressives have accomplished. I want to just even look more broadly beyond this bill and look at some of President Biden's successes on his agenda. It's a long list, and I don't even have time to read it. It's that long. But not only what we're talking about now, $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, bipartisan gun safety bill, veterans, so on and so forth. Vote in progressives. All the things that are going to make life better for you. That is what a progressive agenda looks like. That is what being a progressive is all about. Another funny thing from uh, from our good friends at Fox News again. You know, we always talk about crime. They always talk about, you know, the Democrats are causing crime to go up and all that good stuff, right? Well, you know, every time you give Fox News the truth, they go into a tizzy fit. I want you to check this other one out because this one was funny as hell as well. And let's hope it works. And I also think we have to look at crime in a really important, inquisitive, and civil way. If you look at counties and cities and states, crime is higher in red and Republican states more than it is in liberal cities. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Blue can, can cities, can crime is going up rampantly. So you can talk about red states, but let's talk about where the crime Jacksonville is the murder capital of okay. Florida. Can, can I just address this from an actual California. factual point, not a deflection? <laughs> that was almost a useful conversation. Fox doesn't like to acknowledge inconvenient facts like that. Red states on average tend to have more crime. That's simply indisputable. Uh, they don't like to talk about that, but yet it does occasionally crop up. You saw there a woman trying to point out, look, we can talk about Chicago or whatever, but let's be clear, these red states and red cities, she tried to list them, but was shouted over, actually have more crime and they melted down. They could not accept the, the destruction of their narrative. Now, that doesn't mean that like the crime is specifically because of conservative ideology, but I don't know that maybe there's something there that we could dive into. We could figure it out. And you know what? I, I, I don't like that statement that he said, you know, because we can empirically figure it out. And how do we empirically figure it out? You have more guns, you have more shootings. Let me tell you, here in Houston, right? Or near uh, North Houston, a woman gets out of her car, she gets into an altercation, the other person is driving off, she takes out her gun and she starts firing at the car. So that is the reality. The real crime, crime is higher in red states. All the things 
that you find about crime. No, no, uh, Lee Grant. So using the, uh, the thing like them cities, DAs would rather not prosecute is not the answer. Check it out. It's actually in rural areas where, you know, I've got my gun and I'm drinking my liquor and all that stuff and I blow somebody up or shoot somebody down. And we also know the data is skewed because, you know, if somebody gets popped with a cap, the, the, the sheriff in the little town might say, hey, just go to the hospital and kind of blew it off. You know, you don't, it's not like in the, in the middle of the ghetto where there are a lot of POC, something goes down, you go into jail, you get in the record. Here in Kingwood, our kids don't get records. They need not present themselves to the system. But the FBI doesn't even count that some occurrence occurred. You guys have to remember, BS in, BS out. That's why I always tell you, be careful with what you're reading and understand how the data gets where the data gets. So as far as you're concerned, Lee Grant, crime rates higher in red states because all the things that occur in red states are conducive to higher crime. Poverty, higher crime. Less education, higher crime. More guns, higher crime. I mean, it's not at all inconceivable that it is endemic to red states why there's high crime, okay? That's all. I mean, the, the, all the factors that we've talked about that creates crimes are more prevalent in red states. Poverty, education, guns. What does that breed? Crime, crime, and crime. Not magic, Lee Grant. What occurs in red states are large blue cities. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you actually made that analogy because you're actually correct, Brother Grant. In large urban areas where you have Poverty, lack of education, and guns provided by a sector. And what do you get? High crime rates. So, you're, you know, we are in agreement, Brother Grant. Again, education, uh, poverty, and guns. Crime. And we have to add drugs into that. What's more prevalent in red states than blue states are those three factors. Do remember, the blue states are, in fact, supporting the red states because they are poor. And they're poor because... A policy. It's that simple. Attorney General Merrick Garland called the liars in chief's bluff. He called the bluff of Donald Trump and all the sycophants that were out there trying to say he, uh, the FBI did something wrong. So he said, okay, you guys think the FBI did something wrong? The bluff, the bluff is being called on you. We are going to open up the door, disinfectant. What do you say now? Check out what Garland had to say, and then we'll take it on the other side. Since I became attorney general, I have made clear that the Department of Justice will speak through its court filings and its work. Just now, the Justice Department has filed a motion in the Southern District of Florida to unseal a search warrant and property receipt relating to a court-approved search that the FBI conducted earlier this week. That search was of premises located in Florida belonging to the former president. The department did not make any public statements on the day of the search. The former president publicly confirmed the search that evening, as is his right. Copies of both the warrant and the FBI property receipt were provided on the day of the search to the former president's counsel, who was on site during the search. The search warrant was authorized by a federal court upon the required finding of probable cause. The property receipt is a document that federal law requires law enforcement agents to leave with the property owner. The department filed the motion to make public the warrant and receipt in light of the former president's public confirmation of the search, the surrounding circumstances, and the substantial public interest in this matter. Faithful adherence to the rule of law is the bedrock principle of the Justice Department and of our democracy. Upholding the rule of law means applying the law evenly, without fear or favor. Under my watch, that is precisely what the Justice Department is doing. All Americans are entitled to the even-handed application of the law, to due process of the law, and to the presumption of innocence. Much of our work is by necessity conducted out of the public eye. We do that to protect the constitutional rights of all Americans 
and to protect the integrity of our investigations. Federal law, long-standing department rules, and our ethical obligations prevent me from providing further details as to the basis of the search at this time. There are, however, certain points I want you to know. First, I personally approve the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. Second, the department does not take such a decision lightly. Where possible, it is standard practice to seek less intrusive means as an alternative to a search and to narrowly scope any search that is undertaken. Third, let me address recent unfounded attacks on the professionalism of the FBI and Justice Department agents and prosecutors. I will not stand by silently when their integrity is unfairly attacked. The men and women of the FBI and the Justice Department are dedicated, patriotic public servants. Every day, they protect the American people from violent crime, terrorism, and other threats to their safety while safeguarding our civil rights. They do so at great personal sacrifice and risk to themselves. I am honored to work alongside them. This is all I can say right now. More information will be made available in the appropriate way and at the appropriate time. Donald Trump is a liar. The people who support Donald Trump are liars. All the sycophants that follow him and try to make it make believe that the FBI is planting stuff in his home and all of that. Donald Trump likely had all that confidential information. Who knows why? Maybe to sell it? We don't know. But the fact of the matter is he had something that belongs to the American people, not to Donald Trump. And they had subpoenas and much trying to get that information as he stated there. But guess what? Donald Trump has usually wants to be wrong and strong. Well, he got the bluff called. Let's see what he does now. I am going to make an issue out of what Eric Hayes just said. I want you guys to understand how indoctrinated we are as Americans. Here's what Eric Hayes know that I support, not support keeping people in jail, uh, having them get out of jail on their recognizant and put some restrictions on them. If they fail that, they go back to jail. But here's the deal. He says, Egberto, what is your impression of the five out of six arrested in Houston for stealing Cadillac converter already out on bond? Are they thugs or nice people you like? They're thugs. All right. And I think both of us agree that they're thugs. They are taking something away from Americans, right? They're stealing from Americans. All right. Let's look at the oil companies now. The oil executives that said we are going to cause these gasoline prices to raise, even though there's not a real oil shortage, but we lie. Even though there's not a real gasoline shortage, but we shut refineries down uh, purposefully so that we can have a reason to say why gasoline prices are or higher even with an oil glut, or we just willy-nilly carry the price of gasoline over five bucks because we can. We have price and power. How is that any different? They are picking your pockets. One does it behind closed doors, or one does it quietly. The one does it openly. I take your money because I can. When an oil company charges you $5, that's unrecoverable money they took because they could. They stole because they had license to steal. But we look at those executives as upstanding people, good people. They have caused the deaths of more people than the catalytic converter stealer, th thief. These Thugs in executives' offices in oil companies have caused more debts. These thugs that run power companies have caused more debts than any puny thug stealing a catalytic converter. Yet in our capitalist society, we decide, oh, those are still upstanding executives. But those guys that are there cutting your catalytic converter, they're thugs. I ask you, stop being indoctrinated and call 
those catalytic converters thieves, thugs, and call those executives sitting down in those those skyscrapers that are causing the price of oil to be what it shouldn't be, they are thugs as well. Old videos, old reruns, hey, they're great, aren't they? Remember the days when Fox News thought we needed to lock up Hillary Clinton. Remember the days when uh, Hillary Clinton could do no good. Good. I mean, I'm not a Hillary Clinton fan, but I remember how they attacked her. I mean, they had no evidence. There's just emails, emails, and she may have had classified information that got out and all that good stuff. The one thing we do know is that Donald Trump, he had classified information at his home in Mar-a-Lago. We also know that previously... The FBI, or, or one of the organizations, got a few boxes of, a, of, of material he shouldn't have from his home. Where is the lock him up for Trump? But I mean, let's, let's remember history. Take a look at this, and then let's go ahead and take it on the other side. Because, my friends, this is brilliant. Clinton did not respond to reports that she used a private email, not a government email address, while she was Secretary of State. And frankly, I think it's, it, there's a potential this is a violation of the records law, the Records Act. Nobody is above the law, not even Hillary Clinton. Had you done it? Or had I done it? Um, I'd be off the Intelligence Committee. My, my classification would have been removed. Isn't the mishandling alone, Judge Janine, isn't that in and of itself a crime? Yes. I think she should be in jail for what she did with her emails, okay? She should be in jail. We do not need a reckless president who believes she is above the law. Lock her up. That's right. Yes, that's right. Lock her up. Hillary Clinton shouldn't be allowed to run. But it's okay if it's a he, not a she. From the party of law and order to the party of big time hypocrisy. After that FBI search, Republicans are making it more clear than ever where their loyalties lie. And that is with the former guy, Donald Trump, no matter what the consequences. What were you really doing? What were you looking for? Why not talk to President Trump and have him give the information you're after? They will break down your front door. They will spy on your text. Think about what they could do to you. It's like what we thought about the Gestapo or people like that. This is the worst attack on this republic in modern history. And this is a chilling moment in the country's history. This is an abomination. All of them have to be held accountable. Banana Republic. The Banana, Banana Republic. Republic. This is Gestapo crap, and it will not stand. This is a declaration of war. They can and do it to you. That sure is bananas. Mark, compare that to what we just heard those very same people say about Hillary Clinton's emails. Hey, let's just listen to Trump. Lock him up. That's what he says. He pretty much says, lock me up because I did all these things that Hillary did. And I wanted her locked up. It's amazing. Nothing applies to him, right? I mean, today or yesterday, I believe it is. Either yesterday or today, he went in front of the grand jury and pleaded the fifth. But then, wasn't he saying, if you don't have anything to hide, if you're innocent, there's no need to take the fifth. That's what he did. Again, we, we need to, I mean, I, I understand. A lot, a lot of folks don't want to admit it. But we have to, I like the way that um, MSNBC put the two things together, right? To show the hypocrisy. And the thing about it is, we need to get this in front of those folks on the right. And look, they're going to hold steady. You know, they're going to, even when they see that, you know, their hate for the, for the libs or whatever is likely going to allow them to continue to kind of, not fool themselves, but not to take you know, ignore it, you know, let, let, let it be bygones. But what happens, folks, is it plants a seed. And when they come back with the attacks on the libs again, while, uh, while it will not be, it, it, while it not, they, they, they will not become libs, it won't have the impact that it had before. Because what these guys ultimately realize is that, you know what, Fox News, kind of full of crap, you know. And it, it's just a political game. And, you know, we don't, we don't have or necessarily 
or trying to convince conservatives to become left-wing progressives or anything like that. We just want them to vote their interest. And the interesting thing is they'll realize that their interest is lockstep with ours probably 80 to 90 percent of the times. That's all we want. Be a conservative. Be whatever you want to be. Let's just all live together and vote our interest. A friend of mine at Daily Coast, his name is Frank Vine Walton. He caught a little piece with Dershwit. It turned out that, you know, remember Dershwit, Dershwit came out in defense of Donald Trump all during the impeachment trial and all that kind of stuff. Well, he happened to go down to Fox News and he said something that somehow, you know, it went against the Fox line. And they, uh, and Maria Bartiromo went into a tizzy fit. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Remember, this was a past strong supporter and defender of Donald Trump. So much so that he had a problem going back to Martha's Vineyards or whatever the place is called. But check this out. We'll then take it on the other side. Well, let me ask you about all of these approval ratings. There is an issue in every corner of his agenda, even though they are pushing through this spending bill this morning in Washington. What does he need to do to regain support? Or is it at this point over? He needs to step aside. Well, he's done great things in Ukraine. I think he has done good things on domestic policy, gotten some very good things passed. Um, uh, he is not an exciting, dynamic candidate who's going to get things done. He is the candidate who restores normality. And if uh, Trump is going to run, I think that even a low ranking candidate with a, essentially moderate views, he won't win, but Trump will lose. So nobody is going to win this next election if it's Trump versus Biden. It will be who has the most negatives and who loses the election. Nobody's going to win that election. Well, I want to ask you about that because you supported Trump and you were trashed for it in the uh, in the public. Uh, you wrote a book about integrity. We'll get uh, slip in a short break and get back to that. Talking about uh, integrity and what is going on in the two systems of justice at today's Department of Justice. Stay with us. Alan Dershowitz continues next. <laughs> Welcome back. And I am back with Alan Dershowitz. Alan, I got to get back to something you just said, because you said Joe Biden was moderate. You said he has moderate p policy. You said he's passed some good things. You said he did a good job in Ukraine. I don't know what you're talking about. This is not a moderate president. OK, we have another spending bill that they're negotiating right now, uh, which will likely stoke inflation. And on Ukraine, he offered Zelensky a flight out of there on, on you know, on week one so that Russia would just take over. So I, I don't know what you're talking about in terms of uh, Joe Biden being moderate, Alan. Compared to who? I mean, compared to President Trump, who I did not vote for, I defended him against an unconstitutional impeachment, but I didn't vote for him. But compared to President Trump, uh, President uh, uh the, the current president, Biden, is a moderate. So is his attorney general. A no, moderate. he's not a moderate. He's not a moderate. It's just not well, true. And I know that's the BS line that Democrats have been trying to sell us since day one during the campaign. But his actions and his policies are indicative that he's not a moderate. But but let's move on, because you wrote a book about integrity. And this morning, we're talking all about integrity. And did you see uh, what happened there? They went to a break after. Dershowitz started to say that, oh, Biden is a moderate and Biden is doing good things, etc. And after the break, I wonder, do you think Trump gave her a call? Do you think Trump called and said, how dare you put that on the air? How dare you do that? And then you hear what happened. She comes on and she really starts to terrorize good old D Dersh Alan Dershowitz. Dershowitz was a good guy for them. But now he made the mistake and said, all the wrong thing. Check that out uh, on uh, dailycoast.com. Uh, they have a couple more out there. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where 
uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. Please get one of my several books out there. As I see it, Class Warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom for a contribution of $120. It's worth it how to talk to your right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors for a contribution of $120. How to make America utopia, take away the economy from those who rigged it for a pledge of $120. Get any two of those books for $200, any three of those books for $250. The contributions for my books go directly to support our station, KPFT 90.1 FM. Alternatively, folks, please get your basic KPFT-only membership for $40, a Pacifica-only membership for $25, or choose from one of our many other gifts for your contribution. Just go to kpft.org. Choose Politics Done Right for the program and select an option either for our books or something else to support the station. It is definitely worth it. You can listen and or watch Politics Done Right Mondays through Fridays on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash politics done right or on YouTube Live at politics done right dot com slash YouTube. Please do not forget to follow me on Twitter for updates. My Twitter handle is at Egberto Willies at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L. I -E -S. But don't you forget, listen to us live on air at KPFT 90.1 FM on Thursdays at noon and at Fridays at 11 a.m. all central time. Please remember to keep your community radio station in your minds. Keep KPFT on your mind. Talk about it. Tell your friends about it. Tell them you know about this station in town, 90.1 FM Houston, that needs your support. That is there to provide that nourishment that we need. KPFT 90.1 FM Houston. Well, folks, that's it for today. You know how I'm going to end this baby. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that, unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right.